Hello and welcome to Just One More T-Shirt. No watches today, folks. Welcome to the first and, in all probability, the last Jomwa SOTTC State of the T-Shirt Collection 2021. I have been asked to make this video a number of times over the last few years and I thought, why not take a break from the usual watch review stuff, a break for you and a break for me, and I would do my T-Shirt Collection. Little did I know that that would involve organizing and ironing 86 t-shirts. It took me about five hours. So if nothing else today, can I please ask for a thumbs up for my ironing? So why t-shirts? Well, I've always been into t-shirts, especially kind of unusual, quirky, silly, interesting ones, and ones with a lot of text on them that people would read as you walk past them in the street. I always found that quite amusing. So even when I was back in Scotland nearly 20 years ago, t-shirts were still a bit of a thing. This is one that I got made up, Club Gorbals. I used to live in the Gorbals in Glasgow. My friends and I used to party pretty hard there, hence Club Gorbals. This is one of my oldest and most treasured t-shirt possessions therefore nowadays. And when I left the tropical paradise, that is Glasgow back in 2003, so nearly 18 years ago, I moved over to Sydney and I actually moved to somewhere that had genuine t-shirt weather. I doggedly wear shorts and t-shirts for at least six months of the year. and My collection of t-shirts therefore just expanded and expanded and expanded. And four years ago, when I started Just One More Watch and moved in front of the camera, I thought I needed a bit of a signature, something that would become a trademark of me and the channel, something that I would add another element other than just watch reviews, now, I don't mind an occasional Lacoste polo shirt, but I wouldn't want to wear one every day, and I settled on t-shirts. And this is the first ever video that I made where I appeared in front of the camera. This is the second. That one says, life is meaningless and everything dies on it, by the way. This is the third, and this is the fourth. And as you can see, I've still got Danger Mouse and Penfold, but to be honest, they've both probably seen better days. And now I find myself buying t-shirts on just as regular, if not more regular basis, than I buy watches. So I gathered all of my t-shirts yesterday in my living room in advance of ironing them all this morning. And I divided them up into various categories, which are quite telling, by the way. And I'm going to show you them in those categories today very, very briefly. Those categories being motoring and motorsports, music, educational institutions, 80s, 90s pop culture references, there's a bit of leeway here and obviously a bit of overlap between categories, Star Trek, Star Wars, and gifts from subscribers. I have had a whole bunch of t-shirts from you lot over the years and it's an open-ended offer. If you wanna see me wearing your local sports club, your local town, whatever it is you're into, send me an email, just one more watch at gmail.com. Send me a t-shirt, I will love you for it. Let's start with motoring and motorsport. I am a lifelong petrol head, love all kinds of motorsport, but number one reigning supreme is Formula One. And during the season, I do literally eat, sleep, breathe F1. I am an absolute obsessive, and I have been just as obsessed for decades. Now, I may be too young to remember Fangio and Stewart, but I certainly remember Prost, Senna, Mansell, and Schumacher. But just because I didn't get to see a driver race, doesn't mean to say that I can't appreciate them. James Hunt is a legend for both his on-track and his off-track exploits. If you haven't watched Ron Howard's movie Rush, I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic film and it will give you an insight into what these gentlemen did on and off the track back in the 1970s. And the fact that for many years, other than his blood group, this was the only patch on his overalls speaks volumes about the man and the decade in which he was competing. Gone, but not forgotten. F1 has got progressively safer over the decades, but it's still a dangerous sport today. And on the 1st of May, 1994, we lost one of the greatest drivers of all time in the form of Ayrton Senna de Silva. Three-time world champion, who knows how many that could have been. Again, gone, but definitely not forgotten. From racing cars to road cars and the first road car I ever drove. Although admittedly, it wasn't actually on a road, it was on a beach on the west coast of Scotland. It was one of these, an old Range Rover. My dad had one, I think it was a 1985 B-Reg. It was falling to pieces even in the late 80s when I drove it, but I haven't forgotten it and I still look lustfully when I see the occasional one passing me by in Sydney today. I got my own first car when I passed my test at 17 a few years later, and it was a slightly more appropriate Volkswagen Polo with a 1.1 litre engine. So I've always had a bit of a thing for Volkswagens. I've had a number of them over the years since then. Not one of these though, not the combis, the kind of Aussie classics. I wish I'd had a combi because they just keep going up and up in value. These days though, I'm into Japanese cars. Never had a Japanese car until I got a Honda Accord Euro slash Acura TSX a couple of years ago with the K20. 
2024 engine. What an engine, absolutely phenomenal. Nobody makes engines like Honda apart from maybe Toyota. So I sold the Honda and I now drive a 15 year old Lexus, by far the best car I've ever owned. On to pop culture references, TV shows, movies, and video games from the 80s and 90s mostly. This one is a little bit older than that and it was the first t-shirt that I wore in the first on-camera video that I made back four years ago. It is Sid James, of course, from the Carry On films. I'm not sure they'd be making the Carry On films in 2021, but they were highly amusing for their day. Talking of amusing, Seinfeld. I didn't watch Seinfeld at the time. I only first saw them two or three years ago, watched all nine seasons, absolutely loved it. Arguably one of the funniest shows ever made. I mean, what's not to love about a German with a moustache denying you soup because he didn't like your attitude? But you can't talk about comedy without going back to one of the OGs, Monty Python's Flying Circus. I've always thought there was a little bit of John Cleese in me somewhere. Or should that be Basil Fawlty? I reckon there's a bit of Basil Fawlty in most people. I reckon there's a bit of Manuel in most people also. I used to love the old black and white Japanese Godzilla movies when I was a kid. Do you know that phrase, so bad it's good? Well, that was pretty much intended for the Godzilla films. They were dreadful, but they were fabulous. I mean, a giant fire-breathing moth? Are you serious? Only the Japanese could come up with that. From so bad it's almost good to so good it is almost scary. Terry Gilliam's Brazil, one of my favourite movies of all time from 1985. Definitely a bit of Monty Python in there with Gilliam and Palin starring, but really, really dark. Dystopian sci-fi, definitely my favourite genre. So these next two t-shirts fit right into that. Big fan of the Mad Max series of movies. It's a real debate actually as to which one is my favourite. I'd probably go for number one though. In America, you got a dubbed version. So if you haven't seen Mad Max in a while, try and dig one out when they're actually speaking Australian and not American. And I promise you it'll be worth it. And when I saw this t-shirt, I knew I had to have it. The combination of supercharged fours, Mad Max, and Haynes manuals, irresistible. And while we're on the theme, I'd buy this for a dollar. And who doesn't love a classic 80s movie with a Cassio in it? I've always loved the Muppets, even in space, as we'll talk about later. I even took a girl on a first date to see the Muppet Christmas Carol movie when I was 16. Didn't get a second date, no idea why. A lot of my t-shirts I buy on eBay and I pay through the nose for. A lot of them I buy from Kmart and I pay $10 for, including this one. As did this one. I didn't actually own any He-Man toys as a kid, but my best friend Andrew Todd had heaps of them and I used to go up to his house and play with them regularly. So Andrew, if you're watching, thanks mate. And to wrap up this section, a few retro gaming references. I played most of these games back in the 90s and I just bought a Super Nintendo Mini Classic stack full of games to take me all the way back there again, including a couple of the best Final Fantasies. The Mario platformers, of course, and Super Mario Kart. I played Super Mario Kart heaps when it first came out. It's one of the reasons why I dropped out of university the first time around. Which segues me neatly into educational institutions. I went back to uni about 10 years ago and I'm still there. I don't talk about it much because it's terribly boring. I've got about a year to go before I submit my PhD thesis. I did a Bachelor of Art online whilst working full time from Griffith University. I then did a Masters on campus at Sydney's Macquarie University, the same place where I'm currently studying for a PhD, writing an 85,000 word thesis that nobody will ever read. What a way to spend a decade. But a number of you have also sent me t-shirts of your alma maters, including University at Buffalo, Texas Christian University, and Cal Poly, all of which I wear with pride. And a bunch of other subscribers have sent me t-shirts over the years that have some relevance to them. I'm sorry if I have forgotten your names. The names may be forgotten, but your t-shirts will live forever, including this one from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I haven't been to New Smyrna Beach, but I'm sure it's lovely. If you have, leave me a comment, let me know. Now I have one subscriber who is particularly proud of what I assume is his home state of Oregon and he sent me a few t-shirts, including this one, which always raises a few hackles in the comments section. I guess it must be state to state rivalry. I don't get it, but he does so much so that he sent me two of them in different colors. Like I said, he must be a proud Oregonian. I had a proud plane spotter send me this one of a 747. A proud Boston Celtics fan send me this. A proud Dodgers fan send me this and this. And you've guessed it, Mr. Oregon is at it again. And somebody sent me this fabulous shirt of a cat hat. Did you get it? Cat hat? I wasn't sure whether to include it in the subscriber gift section or the science fiction section, but it does segue me rather neatly between the two. 
Starting with Star Trek, of course you can love both Star Wars and Star Trek, why wouldn't you? They're both fantastic. Now, I have dabbled with all of the series, big fan of the current discoveries, by the way, they are great if you haven't already had a crack at those, but Jean-Luc Picard is my man, Patrick Stewart, what an actor. You don't have to be Shakespearean trained to say, make it so, or engage. But it certainly doesn't do you any harm, does it? It was kind of a soap opera in space for men really, wasn't it? With a fabulous cast of recurring characters, usually a neat moral ending to the 45 minute episode and some fantastic baddies. But for the ultimate good versus evil in space, it really has to be Star Wars. Now I was born in 1975, so a bit too young for the first movie when it first came out in the cinemas. But by the time The Empire Strikes Back came out, I was all over the merch. I may not have had any He-Man toys, but I had heaps of Star Wars toys. The figurines, the ships, the lot. They're all gone, which is a shame because they're worth a small fortune these days, but I've still got plenty of t-shirts. This one probably being my favourite, I bought it after Disney had taken over the franchise, but before Carrie Fisher had died. Disney have been a bit of a mixed blessing for every Rogue One, there's a Last Jedi, but at least we have the Mandalorian. Meaning we can all coo over Baby Yoda, aka Grogu, just like we could over the Ewoks back in Muppets in Space, Return of the Jedi in 1983. And Disney's involvement means that the merch train is under full steam once more. Plenty of cheap t-shirts about, another $10 special, some of which I even wear outside of the house. And some of which I don't. Not all of my Star Wars tees are official, however, some of them are decidedly unofficial. Some could be described as fan art, taking their inspiration from the movies for better or for worse. But as long as Disney keep pumping out the movies and the shows, there'll be a steady supply of Star Wars related t-shirts for me to wear long into the future. And finally, it's music. Maybe I'm not listening to quite as much music as I used to, bit of a sore point at the moment still. This is a Sydney Opera House t-shirt. I worked at the Opera House for a decade. I used to see some fantastic bands and get paid for the privilege. Haven't worked there in the last 12 months. Maybe there'll be shifts for me again next year. My own personal taste, a bit of a mixture of old and new. I mean, who doesn't love Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon after a couple of whatever it is you're into? And I'm a massive fan of Steely Dan, grew up listening to Gaucho in the back of my dad's car. It's still one of my favourite albums of all time. And if you don't think that the Beatles are one of the greatest bands of all time, then you probably should. But I sold my soul to dance music about 20 years ago and I haven't regretted it. There is something terrifyingly magnificent about techno, maybe it's a Glasgow thing. And I don't mind a bit of IDM either. Richard D. James, Aphex Twin, arguably one of the granddaddies of the genre. And if you haven't encountered Yolandi Visser and Diane Vord before, I highly recommend checking out a couple of their YouTube videos. I came across them 10 years ago. I'd never seen anything like it at the time. I still haven't. Where do you go from there? Well, you probably finish at this point then, don't you, Jody, with one final custom t-shirt featuring the channel motto, you don't have to spend a fortune, if you don't want to, to get a great watch on your wrist. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was worth me ironing all 86 of those t-shirts for. I hope it explains a little bit of the madness behind the whole t-shirt thing and some of my likes, some of my hobbies, the things I have been into over the years that I display in t-shirt form. I will not be making this one annually. Maybe I'll revisit this in four years time with another bunch of t-shirts. Thanks again. I will see you all in a future video, which I promise will be about watches.